Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. Today's episode has quite a few visual show and tells. I have included direct links to the still images my guest and I will be discussing if you would like to catch them on the back end. However, if you would like to see and enjoy them as we talk about them, hop on over to the Paranorm Girl YouTube channel. So, here is an interesting thought. You could be staring right at a Sasquatch in the wild and not see it. People say, but but it's got to be so easy to see if it's as big as witnesses say it is or as hairy and imposing and strange looking as they say. But it just ain't always so. Why? How? Even despite their possibly advanced talent for camouflage, it is because you, the observer, might not be paying attention and don't know to look, and because it's something you are not expecting to see, ever. (laughs) Studies show that change blindness and inattentional blindness can cause us to miss even major changes or additions to our environment. That is something I was reminded of when I sat down with today's guest. A quick fun announcement, though, before I bring him on. The premiere episode of Beer, Booze, and Boogeymen is almost upon us. Catch this event live this Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you already follow the Paranorm Girl Pod on YouTube, you're all set, baby. Thank you so much but you're all set. Just push the notify me button on the pending live that is up on the channel right now and be notified when it's go time. If you are not following, it is time. It is time. (laughs) I cannot believe how much response we have been getting from folks about the topic of the evening, haunted workplaces. Now, I know I've got a story or two to share, but I am extremely excited to hear your guys' stories. I know you guys got some good spooky stories to share. If you want to participate and take part in this creepy celebration of the macabre and inexplicable, there are a few ways to do so. There is still time to submit your written account of what happened. And there is still time to call the voice line and leave it for us in a message to be played during the stream. But if you're going to be tuning in anyway, and you're feeling especially spicy, we will be accepting live calls. All that information and pertinent links can be found below. Homies, cannot wait to see you guys there. All right, let's get to it. My guest is a renowned painter whose work can be found in private and public collections around the world. His work is not easily defined and is based on many influences, but without a doubt, it is thought-provoking, mysterious, romantic, and at times quite unexpected. Whether it's a wooded pathway or a possible portal to another realm, the observer is easily drawn in to become a willing participant within the beautiful scenery. But be warned, you may become so enwrapped with the dense forest or the play on light that you miss another aspect of his work entirely. Someone or something hidden staring right back. Please enjoy my conversation with artist Timothy Wayne Williams. Okay, well, I uh, grew up in Indiana. I'm in Indianapolis currently. Um, I was a musician for a long, long time. I really thought I was going to be a rock star. I mean, I worked at it really hard, and I got real close. Um, Then that all fell apart, and I just did not have the stomach to start all over again and, you know, try to form another band or anything. So I was like, nah, I'm done with that. So uh, my fallback was art. I just happened to mention to my mother-in-law one year, I was like, 
you know, I've always wanted to try oil painting. And then I think that Christmas she bought me a set, you know, an oil paint set. And I started messing around with it and, and I really took to it fast. And um, I realized, okay, I'm supposed to be doing this the whole time. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it really became obvious. It's like, I was an okay drummer, but I'm a much better painter, you know, um, not that I'm the greatest painter, but you know what I mean. It's <laughs> you're I, pretty dang I'm good. Better than I was a drummer. So, uh, <laughs> and um, it, it's weird though. You know, I used to do a lot of fine art shows for a long time, and uh, I would have people come up and they're you know people I went to school with, and I mean, weren't you supposed to be a rock star? <laughs> like, Shut up, you know. Yeah. But um, but finally, that has kind of gone away. But. Um, so anyway, like, yeah, I did fine art shows for a long time and I got really interested. Yeah. You know, well, I've always been interested in the paranormal. And then, uh, one day I was listening to a podcast and, uh, it was had to do with Bigfoot and, uh, I was doing a landscape and I thought, wouldn't this be cool to just add a little Bigfoot in the back, you know, and, you know, just for my own amusement. So I did, you know, it was no big deal. And, um, uh, I ended up doing an art show one time and um, it was a slow art show and I was trying to get people to stay in my booth. And so uh, I ended up telling people, Hey, there's a Bigfoot in this painting, you know, see if you can find it. Well, I realized people were really into that, you know, really, really liked it. So when I got home, I was like, I wonder if there's any Bigfoot groups on Facebook and there's a million of them. I had no idea. So I immediately joined a, a bunch of groups. I mean, literally probably hundreds. And um, I started posting some of the paintings, you know, just saying, hey, what, what do you guys think of this? You know, and uh, I got like a thousand likes, like on like my first or second painting. And I realized, oh, OK, maybe maybe I'm on to something here. You know, Pete, this is good exposure. And um, I had worked in a printing company for 33 years. And I started selling so well uh, my art that I was able to quit that job and uh, do art full time. So wow. extremely excited about that because I yeah. hate that job. <laughs> hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was no, I'm... Way too long. <laughs> Yeah, some, sometimes we do uh, stay too long at the circus, so to speak. Uh, been there. Uh, you know, <laughs> one thing, uh, you, you are an incredible painter, and you're, you're definitely, you, you were meant to do this. But, uh, you know, your, your drumming was uh, pretty stellar, man. I, I, was, I was peeping a video you posted to Facebook. Oh, really? <laughs> With your, uh, was it a, a hair metal band? Like a long oh, hair Oh, yeah. Band? Yeah. You rocked it, man. Oh, my gosh. That's a skill. That's a skill I would love to have. If, if I were to be a musician, I, I would love to be a drummer. Um, so how long ago, you, you said that this, this just kind of fell into place. You realized it was something, you know, you, you were meant to be doing. It sounds like it happened pretty fast. How long ago did this take place? Oh, yeah. Um, three years ago. Wow. Is, is when I started the, the paranormal stuff, you okay. know? So yeah, it, it moved quick, real quick. So yeah, I mean, it, uh, go ahead. Oh, it, it, it just, uh, you know, it, it looks like you've been doing this your whole life. So that's... well painting. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, no, not my whole life. Um, I mean, I was well into adulthood before I started. So, um, I mean, maybe 15 years, 20 years, somewhere around there. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, give us an idea, like what, uh, before I load up these images and, and we are going to get into the niche stuff, but give us, give us an idea of what your style is and, and your inspiration behind it. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, I'm technically, I think I'm right in between impressionism and realism. It's kind of right in the middle. It's neither one. And uh, I want to paint, uh, I want to paint a painting that you want to stare at, 
and, and it, it, it inspires your imagination, you know, more than just finding, you know, a cryptid in it or anything. I want, I want paintings that, that you can't just walk by, can't put behind your couch and just, you know, ignore it. You know, I want, if people come to your house, I want them to go, Oh, wow. Okay. I want to sit and stare at that. You know, there's something going on here. And those are my favorite kind of paintings and always were, you know, and, and so that's what I'm trying to do. I, I want something that sets a mood, you know, captures a, a moment. I want you to imagine yourself there, you know, imagine what's going on. And, um, you know, it, I just, yeah, that's basically yeah. I, yeah, you know what, uh, the, the image that came to mind, actually, one that you sent me that I can share here, uh, maybe we start out with this one, and then we're going to jump into the uh, hidden Bigfoot stuff, but sure. I was just blown away by this guy. Uh, I, I'm so glad you brought that one up first, because this is one I love talking about. Um, this one, I wanted to kind of represent kind of a porthole, possibly. It's kind of like if you were walking through the woods and it was winter, and all of a sudden as you're walking, you notice that there's a bridge and that it's becoming like spring or summer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and it's something that's like leading you. You know, maybe it's, um, I believe this is named Siren's Call. And so it, it may not be necessarily a good thing, you know, uh, it could be something bad on the other side. That's, you know, this is bait. <laughs> so, uh, not a lot of people got this painting. They were, they really didn't. A lot of people just thought, oh, you know, the snow is clearing up, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. You're, it's almost Narnia esque, mm -hmm. you know, you're, uh, leaving winter and then you're entering immediately into, you know, spring. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it, when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is so like it's it's got this realistic like sense to it. Like I I feel like I could be standing right here. Like this looks totally normal." And then it hit me. I was like, "Oh, oh no, that's I mean, it's like snowy snowy in the forefront here, and then this beautiful like springish, like kind of I don't know, leading off into fairyland over there. Like yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It does make you think. It makes you think. Uh, but that I think this. Cool. This is a good example of the kind of stuff that you do in your style. So I just wanted to start off with that guy. Yeah, great. Uh, great. But let's take a look here. So we're going to get into some of the calendar stuff. So you've created the 2024 uh, cryptid calendar. Uh, there's hidden Bigfoot in this guy. Uh, how did the idea, I know you did one last year as well as 2023. Mm -hmm. how, how did this idea for the calendar come about? Well, um, I did one, uh, like I self-published one, I don't know, f four years ago, I think. Oh. And um, it, it did well. And uh, I, dis I, I had uh, discussed with, do you know, Doug Hycheck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doug, Doug's a great guy. And, and uh, I had showed Doug some of my stuff and he really liked it. And him and his son had uh, started a publishing company. And they hadn't really considered doing a calendar, but uh, they kind of, you know, we were actually talking about doing a uh, coffee table book in the beginning. And uh, eventually I was like, eh, let's, let's do a calendar right now. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, it, it's gone well. It's, it's yeah. cool. Right on. All right. So let's get into some of these images. Um, I'm not sure how many of these were found in the new, I, we know this one is here. Yes, that's the cover. <laughs> it took me a minute, unless you're going to break it to me that it's pareidolia, but it took me a minute to find uh, the, the hidden figure in this. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where'd you see it? Uh, well, I can't zoom in on this picture, but it's up in the right-hand corner. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. You got to zoom in, folks, to uh, to uh, see the little face peeking out at you. But let's talk about some of these. I mean, these are just beautiful, this one. Uh, yeah, you know, I just finished this one the other day. Um, wow. Actually, I took a better picture. I think I sent you the wrong picture. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a great picture. It's not cropped or anything. It's okay. So, yeah. A little back the colors are kind of, there's kind of a shine on it. But yeah, um, this was inspired by one of my customers who just was talking all the time about camping and, and, and wanted a, 
you know, uh, a picture of a, you know, a campsite. And this, um, this is like only the second tent I think I've ever painted. I, I don't normally put tents in there. I didn't know, I don't know why. I, I, I love campfires. I paint tons of campfires. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always, I, I don't put people in my paintings for the most part, just because I want you to kind of place yourself there. You know, I want you to imagine yourself in that seat. And uh, maybe, and I tell people all the time when they ask, it's like, well, where are people in this? And I'm always like, they're off getting firewood. <laughs> so, so that's where the people are. Yeah. The, it, you know, the people are, are uh, evident in this picture. There's a seat, there's a tent, there's a campfire. Right. Somebody did that. Um, all right, let's, let's do an easy one here. This one kind of pops. You can see the yeah. image right away. I caught <laughs> so much grief over this one from a few people who were like, why well, would lanterns be in the, you know, in the woods like that over a creek? That makes no sense. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, if it makes no sense, my work is done here. Uh, you know, I, it's like I I don't know why the lanterns are there. I love lanterns, and it really set a cool mood, and uh, and I think it makes you think. Why are those there? You know, what what does it mean? And uh, if you look right, almost in the middle of the painting is where Bigfoot is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tree peeking. Yeah. <laughs> all right we'll do one more and then uh and then i want to talk about my favorite here uh so this one you can see oh, yeah yeah you've picked out some good ones okay this is another one of my favorites because this is another representation of a porthole and it does have a bigfoot in it and the the thing that makes you know that it's a portal is the shadows if you see how the shadows are falling, if you look through that hole in the middle, the shadows are going completely different way than the rest of the scene. Hmm. And okay. I wanted you to see you're entering another dimension, you know, another reality. And so, uh, yeah, this one, this one I love. This is another very subtle thing that most people don't realize right away. You know, take it, they, you know, it takes forever for people to kind of get this one. But um, yeah, uh, I was real happy with how that one came out. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the the use of, you, you do, you use uh, paths, pathways and uh, stairs uh, kind of, I don't know, like like just pathways through through your your paintings yeah. that are, just really do draw you in. There, that draws yeah. the eye, and you might just miss, you know, the the face uh, staring at you from somewhere in there. I was wondering, do you have any pieces that um, like like that are just so difficult for people? Like they they just look at it as a painting. They don't see anything in it. Like they don't see the figure in it, or you know, they can't find it. Just anything that's so difficult for people to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Matter, matter of fact, when I first started doing this, I didn't tell people for a long time that there were Bigfoot in the painting. <laughs> I did it. I probably sold a dozen paintings and the people have no idea that there's a Bigfoot in there. I just did it for my own amusement. I just thought it was kind of funny. Oh, and wow. um, so, yeah, but uh, yeah, I do have some really difficult ones and people get really mad at me when I put them online and they can't find them. People are just... So I try to do an array. I have like some, you know, easy to find and some kind of difficult. And then I have some that are basically impossible. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do, uh, yeah, here's the last one I want to do of these. Uh, and it is my absolute favorite. And I'll tell you why. I'm a huge, uh, <laughs> huge advocate for the UFO. Yeah. Well, yeah, this one. This is another one I was really happy with how it turned out, mostly because of the uh, the light coming down from the UFO in, in the mountains. You can see behind it, you know, mm -hmm. you can see through that light. And uh, that turned out so well. I was really, really happy. And this one has a Bigfoot in it, too. Did you notice that? I did. It took you me did. a second to find it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I like to think, you know, this is just how I read it. You can read it any way you want. 
I, I, I kind of like to think that UFO is searching for that Bigfoot. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. Well, you know this, uh, sorry, just trying to find the uh, next uh, picture I was going to show. Um, so something I absolutely love about specifically these hidden Bigfoot pieces um, and, and I know like, like your, your styles, it, it's, it's more realistic, but there's, there's a cool metaphor that happens as I was going through these, it occurred to me of when people have, or in like the real world, you know, real life, uh, and having to do with Bigfoot sightings, like you can be zipping down a road, uh, just forest on all sides. And there could be something standing in there and you would just never see you would just overlook it very quickly right. you wouldn't even think to look and it's the same with these pictures these these paintings because they're they're so beautiful there's so much going on in there and if you don't know to look you're not gonna it's it's you're just gonna pass it over yeah you know um i've had um researchers tell me that they love my art because it it reminds them when they're out in the woods that it could be anywhere, you know, that a mm -hmm. Bigfoot could be anywhere. And some people have even said, oh, it, it's it's helped me spot Bigfoot because, you know, I'm looking for, I don't know if that's true, but I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. You know, all right. But um, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I think it, 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 in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of real life, you know, um, mm -hmm if you were in the woods and, and maybe there is one somewhere there, just, you know, just if you take a few minutes to look a little harder, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. All right. And well, and another thing, you know, it brought up because there were a couple paintings that I just could not find it. And uh, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you're, Sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, it, it was a battle with pareidolia. And I think oh, yeah. I've heard you talk about that before, where I was like, I was so sure that, okay, it's the face in the clouds, but you're, you're a lot more literal right. than that. That's what I was, that's what I was trying to say. And I got tongue tied there. Yeah. I, I've had people go, oh yeah, you know, I see you've put this face like in the clouds or in the mountain, there's a, you know, it may, creates, no, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to do an abstract kind of weird you know, thing. I want it to be more like, you know, realistic. Like if you were out in the woods and you come across one of these things, you know? Yeah. So I tell people all the time, I, people are like, ah, oh, I saw you put the face of the alien in there too. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. You know, <laughs> not do that. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a real battle with that pareidolia. Um, <clears throat> what, uh, before we move on, what, what are your actual thoughts on, this cryptid like what do you what do you think about the phenomenon of uh, bigfoot specifically mm -hmm. uh, you know what i believe it exists um i i have to say i'm kind of in the it's a paranormal type thing um you know i tell people it's like well why couldn't there be some sort of creature that could be like a chameleon, you know, could, could blend in so well with, the, you know, with the surroundings that you would never see it, you know? And, um, I, I don't know. I've, I've heard too many weird paranormal type accounts, you know, that I, I just think there's a paranormal element to it. I don't know what it is, but there, there definitely is something there. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I just spoke with a really fascinating guest, uh, Carter Bouchard, and uh, he, he is of, of that kind of. I listened to that. Yeah. That was yeah. Good. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's the, the ape only very physical um, argument. Like it explains a lot of it. It does. It sure does. But then you hear these these stories and these kind of just in, uh, unexplainable, inexplicable experiences that I don't know. I mean, you, you believe it when uh, when somebody like Carter tells you it's like, I, I believe you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it. Um, 
have you had a, an encounter or an experience? Not with Bigfoot. No. no. Oh, okay. okay. I've, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, I live in Indiana. There have been sightings in Southern Indiana, but mm -hmm. rarely, you know, um, so yeah, no, now I'm in the suburbs of Indianapolis. So yeah, not a lot happening around here. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing in the city. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about um, paranormal? Because uh, we're, we're going to lead into some of your more paranormal paintings. But I was curious if you had any experiences with the paranormal just in general. Yes, I have a, f a few. Um, I have what I think is kind of a demonic encounter. And I have a, a very strange, I guarantee you haven't heard a story like it, kind of angelic encounter. Okay. Um, so um, I'll tell you the demonic one first. Um, so I, I told you I was a musician for a long time. And, and when I was in high school, me and the guys in the band put a bunch of money together and we decided to rent out like this music hall. And uh, it was kind of hard to explain what it was, but it was just this gigantic like barn kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it had a couple garage doors and then it had a, a door to go in and out. Well, uh, there was one night we were setting up, uh, it was the night before the show, and we were all setting up our, our gear, and we were just getting ready to leave. We were done. We were all kind of by the soundboard talking and, you know, planning things. And all of a sudden, we hear this cackling laugh, the creepiest cackling laugh. This person was laughing like they had heard the funniest joke ever. Mm-hmm. And we look up and there's this guy um, sitting on uh, one of our uh, PA speakers, just sitting there, just laughing his head off. And we're looking around and we're all like, how did he get in here? Because he would have had to walk by us to get in. We had closed the garage doors. There was only one way in and out at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, we couldn't figure out why he was laughing. And it was so creepy. And um, have you ever seen the movie The Shining? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the guy, Scatman Crothers, who's the guy who tells the boy about The Shining? Yep, yep. That's mm -hmm. what he looked like. He looked like that guy. So uh, we all are like, well, who's going to go talk to this guy and kind of chase <laughs> him out? And of course, everybody pushes me forward, you know, to do it. <laughs> so I go up there and I'm like, hey, man, you know, what, what are you doing? Um uh, you know, we were all getting ready to leave. And he says, ah, I got something for you. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. And he pulls out. And I don't even know how he grabbed these. Okay. He, he reaches behind him and he pulls out a stack of Polaroids. His fingers could barely fit around it. A stack of Polaroids of like hardcore pornography. Okay. He was like, you know, showing me, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, this guy must be a pimp or something. And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 not down with that, you know, mm -hmm. good. And he said, well, what else do you want? What else, you know, I can get you anything. I'm like, okay, okay, maybe he's a drug dealer, okay, too. And I'm, I'm like, nah, not down with that. And then he gets real serious and he looks at me, you know, real hard. And he's like, I can get you anything. What do you want? And the way he was saying it, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like drugs. I mean, it was different. It was like, I can get you what you want, you know? And uh, it creeped me out, like like you would not believe. And so <laughs> finally, one of the guitar players came up to, and he, uh, <laughs> of course, he's going through the, the Polaroids like nothing, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, come on, dude, we need to leave this guy alone. Mm -hmm. And so we walked back to the soundboard and that's not very far, um, 30 feet, maybe. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of huddle and the rest of the guys are all like, what is this guy doing here? What does he want? And by the time, it, you know, I, I was getting ready to tell him about the guy, but I thought, well, you know, I want to see if he's still there. You know, I look up and he is gone. Just absolutely gone. There's no way he could have got out without walking by us. Just mm -hmm. no way. I mean, this was 30 feet away. 
And yeah, by the time, you know, I talked to the guys and looked back up, he was gone. So th we were all just stunned, you know, and, and we looked around too. We were like, is he hiding behind something, you know, mm -hmm. and there really wasn't anything he could hide behind, you know, and we, we looked, the guy was just gone. And there was just, uh, so the only entrances to this place was the one door, and then yeah. there were some garage doors. And the garage were... doors, we had closed earlier. Uh, huh. so. What to, you, you called this possibly demonic. What, you know, the, what the reason, you... what makes me think that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I felt like it was almost like my crossroads like moment like this guy could have helped my career if i wanted him to you know and i was really really hungry to become you know a professional musician we were all of us guys in that band were you know broken homes had nothing and all we had is that band and we worked so hard on it you know and it was it, it felt like if I were to have uh, agreed to let this guy help me, you know, it might have been, you know, in a, in t to detriment of my soul in some way. That's just how it felt. It just felt so creepy, you know? Oh. And it's like years later, it even got even more into me when I think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, you know, I was just so shocked. But yeah, it, it really felt like, I was being offered something and I had a choice. And if I would have went with him, you know, it, it could have ended up really bad. Huh. You mentioned something there, uh, your, your crossroads moment. And I'm, I'm just curious, is that in reference to, to something? Yeah, like that's, um, there's a famous story of Robert Johnson, who uh, was this guitar player blues guitar player from way way back in the day mm -hmm. and there was always a legend that he had met the devil at the crossroads and the devil oh. offered him like uh incredible talent you know on the guitar if he gave him his soul oh, okay and so that yeah so that it felt like my crossroads moment like there i could have given my soul to this guy if he you know it, i mean i could have like if I wanted to. But, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it, it obviously still affects you. Oh, yeah. To, today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who? All right. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for another one. You, 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 you said you had another one? Yeah. Well, it's an angelic one. Okay, so this just will <laughs> cleanse the palate. Here. Okay. So uh, this one is a strange story. I've told this one before, and it's it has to do with the toilet of all things. So when my wife and I uh, first had kids, the kids were really small. Um, we didn't have a lot of money and uh, we were actually, um, I'm not sure if my wife was working at the time. We really were struggling. And um, we had uh, this toilet that wasn't working. We had to get a new one. Well, we didn't have the money to hire a plumber or anything. And I thought, you know, I could do this. How hard could it be? Yeah. So I take the toilet off and I'm trying to put on this new one and it's just not going on right. There's something missing. It's just, I couldn't figure it out, you know, and there's like not a lot to a toilet when you change it, you know, but for some reason it was not going on right. And I was really struggling with this thing. And uh, I felt, I felt like I was letting the family down, you know, cause and it took like a couple days and it was like, I, I didn't know what to do. It was like, we were without a toilet and everyone was getting sick of going in a bucket. And, you know, and I felt like I just was letting the family down and I was stressing. I even had a friend of mine come by whose dad used to be a plumber and he worked with his dad all the time. And so, uh, you know, he knew a ton about plumbing. He came in and looked at it and was like, I don't get this either. This should be going on. And um, so he left. He, he like, dude, I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. And he had to go. So I, uh, 
for like the fifth time, I decided I would just go to a hardware store and just look around to see if there was something, some sort of, you know, part that would make this fit right. And uh, I was totally frustrated, just dejected. And I was in a, uh, I think it was a Menards. I don't know if you have those there, but it's a hardware store here. Um, and, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar. <laughs> okay, good, good. And I was just sitting there in the plumbing department. I had even talked to like the plumbing experts there and they were all worthless. And uh, I'm just standing in this aisle going, what am I going to do? We did not have the money for a plumber to come in and deal with this. Yeah. And uh, finally, there was a guy about, I don't know, 15 feet away and he was he just kind of looks at me and he's like, Hey, what you doing? What are you working on? And, and he looked, I don't want to say homeless, but he looked like he looked a little rough and he looked like someone who was lonely and just wanted to talk. And that's what I thought, you know, and I was so frustrated. I, I, you know, I'm normally fairly nice to people, but I was really short with this guy because I just did not want to get into it. And he didn't look like anyone who could help me, you know, but he persisted. He kept saying, well, what are you working on? You know, what's going on? And uh, finally, I was like, ah, you know, I've got this toilet and, you know, this this beeswax seal isn't fitting right. And, you know, and I went on and on. And he walks like 10 feet away, grabs this part, comes up to me. And I swear to God, I'd not seen that part before. And he hands it to me and he tells me exactly how to put it in. And I'm like, oh my God, I think this will work, you know? And I'm like super thrilled, you know? And as I'm, as he's walking away, my wife comes up to me and she's like, who is that? I'm like, I believe this guy just solved our problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, well, did you thank him? And I'm like, I think, I think so. But I like, I just saw him go to the next aisle. And I was like, I'm gonna go find him and, and you know, make sure I do thank him really good. And I went to the next aisle where I saw him go and he's not there. And I looked and I looked around more and the guy was not there. I didn't look, you know, I'm not going to say I went through the whole Menards it was a big store, but I, I don't know how I could have missed him if he was there, you know? So it, it was like, it was like he solved my problem and walked mm -hmm. away and just mm -hmm. disappeared. So wow. yeah. And, and I took that part home, put it in. It was perfect. You know, it was nothing. It was amazing. It was it was the seal that had this extra part on it that I didn't even know they made, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was amazing that this guy just came out of nowhere, solved my problem, and first insisted on helping me, you know, even I, even you know when I was kind of short with him, you know, kind of a jerk, and uh, he insisted, you know, on on telling me how to do that, you know, and mm -hmm. then he just walked away, you know. It was amazing, you know. No, no thanks necessary. He he gave you exactly what you needed right at that moment in time. Yeah, exactly. um, you didn't, yeah, you didn't need anything but that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love the balance of that, like the you know the good and evil, and just these really powerful experiences that have stuck with you to this day. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, have 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 made the difference. Um, do you think? Uh, your personal experiences have um, lended themselves to your art because you know you don't just do you don't just hide Bigfoot you you Correct. also do other cryptids and you've got a, a sea monster kind of series I believe and then you've got these I didn't see these anywhere else but I want to pull up uh let's do this one here oh yeah yeah uh, this one was really interesting. It I, I thought at first, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, th I th was looking at this as a, a Bigfoot painting, and I thought, you know, there looks like a figure off to the right, maybe that figure off to the left. Didn't even see the face right in the middle of, <laughs> of the picture. <laughs> Not just a face, but a, a skull on fire. Um, and uh, I, I would qualify this as a, you know, a, a ghostly image. Yeah, sorts. this this one actually um, I did for a video series. There's a uh, investigator named Eric Mantell from Pennsylvania oh, and him yeah. and I are really good friends. And um, 
he he does these really great videos and um started talking to him about using my paintings as kind of like a uh, what do they call it kind of a where they cut between scenes you know kind of a buffer between scenes he would show one of my paintings and this was specifically kind of done um, for on his request. So this he did a investigation of the New Hope Railroad, where I, I think it's in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure, but um, yeah. I, to be honest with you, I would normally put a skull hanging out of the uh, thing, but <laughs> Eric was like, "Yeah, put a you know make the scary skull in the." the and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> But you are right. I did put in the background, I did put kind of like shadow figures, you know. Okay. That's okay. Like that. That's what those are. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that one. Uh, let me uh, pop this guy up because it's 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 simpler. Like it's it's more, you know, obvious what uh, what that is. Uh, but I just love it. You know, the ghostly. What What's the inspiration behind something like this? You know, I, I love castles. I love anything Renaissance, old like that. And I had come across a picture of something like that. And uh, I just thought it would be amazing, to, you know, to be going up that and have a ghost, you know, pass by you. And, <laughs> and I was experimenting with techniques of, of painting something that looks transparent. And um, this one's, a, I, I, I've done some other ghosts that are a little more subtle. This one's kind of, you know, really stands out. You can't mm -hmm. miss it. But the, the thing with painting that is you kind of, I do a lot with my fingers and I kind of smeared the paint on there. And then I went back and put in, you know, solid white for the details. And you just mm -hmm. put in some details, just vague little representations of, you know, body parts or like the head or like a, robe or something and uh that that was it, an early experiment with doing that wow yeah I, I love this one i love the detail work on the figure um do you sell uh you, you sell your your work like like this would be for sale right yeah this one is sold um oh, okay to a lady my biggest collector believe it or not is a lady who lives just outside of london england and she owns about 30, maybe more of my paintings. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, she's, she's like my, uh, <laughs> she's like my, uh, who is it? Medici's, Medici's who, you know, who buys all my art, like some of the great <laughs> Renaissance painters had like families that collected yeah. their art and kept them going. And that's what I always tell her. She's my Medici. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I, that's my it's my main gig selling this stuff so yeah Amazing. everything's for sale <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's do let's do one more and i think this is sure. kind kind of in reference to what you were uh saying with uh the subtlety of the figure i wish i could zoom in on this so that uh, my viewing audience could see what we have here is a castle it's kind of a, a misty foggy uh scene here and the first thing that pops out is this dragon figure over on the right and you're like oh that's what the painting's about it took me forever to see the figure at the bottom the ghostly figure at the bottom yeah yeah <laughs> just very well done uh that's uh yeah, yeah. That, that was another favorite of mine i really love that love castles yeah that yeah. one hasn't sold yet surprisingly Ooh. okay all right well we're gonna we're gonna get all the deets if anybody has uh you know really uh, love this show and interested in buying some there's something for everybody here and you know Absolutely. paranormal or bigfooters uh but uh we are nearing the end here and i want to save some time for our final segment we're going to go into final questions final thoughts and then we'll close it out and let you get on with your day uh so the final questions that i have for you today we, before we started recording i told you it was a little special a little different i had some patrons submit some questions for you nice. and uh two of my patrons are artists themselves so i i just really enjoy these questions um the first question comes from david linnabury a longtime listener amazing artist uh, his question was, do you have any plans to hide Bigfoot in more urban settings? So P 
peeking out of alleyways in a busy downtown? Uh, you know, probably not. It's just kind of not my thing. You know, I just don't like urban scenes all that much. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, no, the like only like buildings I like to do are like castles and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't, I don't see me doing that actually. Okay. Okay. And his second question uh, was, and, and we, we already know, you know, you do some other cryptids. I think uh, you have some mermaid stuff as well. Sure. Um, what other cryptids do you have plans to paint in the future? What What's in the works? Well, um, you know, I think I'm going to do, some more Mothman type things, um, and and sea monster type things. Um, I love doing that. I, I've been really into painting seascapes here lately, and uh, so you know I always start with just trying to make a nice painting first, and then if I'm happy with it, then I'll put a cryptid in it. And not not all the time I do. You know, a lot of times I don't, but uh, it, it just depends. You know, nice <laughs> the the. the uh, s- um, the seascapes I do gives me a, uh, an out to put a, a crypt, um, a sea monster in it. You know, it gives me a, <laughs> gives me an excuse. <laughs> All right. You know, be, uh, before I forget, has anybody ever told you, you sound like, uh, I can't remember the, the actor's name, Better Call Saul. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it keeps reminding me of. Uh-huh. All right. Um, Final question for you. Uh, this one comes from Dwayne. He wanted to know if he were to get a hold of you, are you able to interpret his encounter with Sasquatch onto canvas? Do you do that? Yes, I I have done that a few times. Um, I've had to turn down a couple because the person wanted to to show like too much. Like they were like, it was a family of Bigfoot. And then there was me. And then this guy came around and, and it was like, I don't think I want to do all that. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I, I have done that before. Yes. I have kind of interpreted people's encounters and, uh, and worked with them. You know, I, I show people as I go, you know, okay, is this still looking like, you know, what you thought it would look like, you know, and, and kind of work with people that way. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll have to commission you to, and talk to you about my, my experience with a shadowy figure, since now I know you do shadow figures. It's not a shadow figure. It's just shadowy. But uh, yeah, I'll hit you up. Yeah, cool. um, all right. Here at the end, uh, any cool events or appearances that you've got coming up? Any conventions you're heading to? Um, the only one... You know, I don't have anything nailed down just yet. I am going to do a bunch of shows this year. Um, I am just kind of holding off. I'm going to have surgery actually on my uh, uh, carpal tunnel surgery on my arms. So I'm kind of waiting to see how long that will take, you know, before I start booking shows because I'm a little worried that, you know, it uh, could slow me down quite a bit. You know, I might not have enough art to take to shows. Oh, so gotcha. I'm kind of playing that by ear. I have one, yeah. I think in Pennsylvania, I definitely think I'm going to do. Yeah, and I'm blanking out. I know it's Bill Rigby's show. Show I forget what it's called. But, uh, when is it? What time of year? Uh, it's in March. March. Oh, okay. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So hopefully, you know, people, if they're yeah. going to that one, they can keep an eye out for you. Um, why don't you let my audience know where they can find you online, find your work, how they can contact you for commission pieces or just to buy a piece. And where should they go to get the 2024 Hidden Bigfoot calendar? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I used to have a website. I actually got rid of it because it just was a pain. And I, for a while there, I was selling so fast that I couldn't even get stuff up on the website. So it, it just didn't make sense to have a website. It was way too much money. So anyway, mm-hmm. best way to get a hold of me now is on Facebook. If you go to uh, T. W. Williams Fine Arts on Facebook, that's the best way to find me. And just message me there. And um, I'm on Instagram at Timothy underscore Wayne underscore Williams underscore. 
super easy. And um, yeah, I do commissions all the time. So anyone can hit me up. Uh, my email is twwilliamsfinearts at yahoo.com. So in any of those ways. Okay. All right. And where did you want to send folks to buy the calendar? Oh, the calendar. Yeah. Uh, that's if you Google ha hangar one publishing, it's, it's there. Um, if you message me through Facebook, I can send you the link. All right. Sounds good. And to close us out, sir, would you like to leave us with any final thoughts, words of wisdom, or a piece of advice? Yes. Um, <laughs> do what you love while you can. You know, um, when I made the choice to uh, leave my job at 33 years and, and do this, I'm so much happier. Um, it's kind of a pay cut because um, I'm not consistently making money. You know, it's not as consistent. I am making money, but it's not as consistent. And it's rough, but mentally, I'm so much happier. And I, and I recommend if you're on the fence or you're thinking that, well, someday I might do this, make that someday now. You know, don't waste any more time, you know. I think I needed to hear that today. Thank you. All right. Painter, artist, extraordinaire, Timothy Wayne Williams, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I really appreciate it. My sincere thanks to Tim for appearing on the show today. Listeners, find and follow him on Facebook at the link below. Reach out, check out his work. It is brilliant, just outstanding stuff. Heck, ask him about translating your own encounter to Canvas. How cool would that be? And then share it with me because I would just, I would just love to see that. I have also included the direct link to buy the 2024 Find the Hidden Bigfoot Fine Art Calendar by Hangar One Publishing. Check it out, you guys. What a great gift idea for the cryptid lover in your life. You know you have one. You know you do. That one friend that sometimes you're like, hmm, I wonder if they're... Yes, they are. They're totally into them. And this is for them. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode on a listening platform, leave a five-star rating. If you enjoyed watching and following along with this one on YouTube, holla at your girl with a thumbs up and a subscribe. And click that little bell icon so you never miss a new upload. That will be a wrap on today's program. If I do not see you guys at Saturday's Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman premiere, I will be so sad, and I will miss you. But if I don't, I shall see you all back here on Tuesday. So until we meet again, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open. <laughs>